from a legal perspective, uh, there are many aspects to being a pastor that are not covered in uh, theology classes. And there are more practical aspects that uh, lawyers like myself would be uh, more familiar with. And uh, so I've got four, four of those things that maybe you can take away. The first one is that as a pastor, you need to understand that while you're a spiritual leader, you're also a manager. You're a manager of a business in many respects. So while pastors like to think of themselves as, you know, uh, shepherding the flock, you also need to understand that you're operating a budget maybe worth hundred thousands of dollars or maybe a million dollars or more. And to that extent, you need to understand that you need to manage maybe your website. You need to manage the real estate that you're operating. You need to manage the people that are working for you. Even managing uh, travel arrangements to go on a mission trip. All of those things need to be managed and you're, you are a manager, and you need to have people make sure that they are doing what you ask them to do, that you have a plan for how these things are going to be accomplished, and that people understand what that plan is. So it's not a matter of just being able to expect the Holy Spirit to work it all out for you. You've got to sit down and make sure that the volunteers understand what it is we're doing, where we're going, and uh, that they've got a leader who is managing the entire process. Second thing, in addition to uh, understanding that you're a manager of a business, part of the practicalities of doing that is something that pastors hate doing, which is paperwork. You need to keep good files and records. From an attorney's perspective, I can tell you that what happens in every single lawsuit is people are trying to recreate history. What happened when that, negotiate, when that contract was being negotiated? What happened when I had a conversation with a parishioner behind closed doors? Did I sexually harass her or did I do something else improper? What happened during a conversation with an employee that finally led to the termination of their employment? You need to keep good files and records. You have a conversation with a, a, a vendor and you're negotiating a price of something, Sit down and write yourself an email or a note about what was discussed. You have an employee who's having a personnel problem and you've talked to them again and again about the types of things that they need to do to improve their job performance. But you have no notes in the personnel file. Keep a note of the times that you talk to them. Maybe each note is not a big deal, but later on when it comes to be a year or a couple months down the road and you look back and you've got a stack of notes that say, hey, I keep talking to this person about this same thing. Those notes and those files that you keep, they're not to uh, win lawsuits necessarily. They're to help you. They help you to remember because no one can remember all the things that they do on a day-to-day -day basis, all the little conversations, all the times that you've talked to somebody about a particular issue. The notes and files are essential. Make sure that when you have contracts that you're getting good people in your congregation to help you look over those contracts and, and keep good records as to how those contracts get changed, how they get modified, how they were negotiated. All that's going to become essential uh, in case either you get sued or if somebody decides to sue the church at some point. The third point for you as a pastor and as a manager of this church business that you're operating is employment issues. Employment issues are huge for pastors. And I can tell you as an employment attorney, I've represented a lot of churches. And in representing churches, I find that uh, pastors, they want to do things on the fly. And staff often get very upset with their, their pastor leaders because they expect someone who's going to manage them and manage the operation. First and foremost, they expect you to pay them correctly. That may come as a shock to you. I can pay people any way I want to. No, you can't. Because even though you're a church, you have to apply by all the state and federal laws that govern how employees are going to be paid. You may find this shocking, but you can't pay every single employee a fixed salary. You, everybody throughout the United States, 
deserves overtime pay unless an employer can demonstrate that they're entitled to some sort of exemption from overtime. And in order to do that, you need to know what those rules are and how they apply. So paying your employees is essential. Second, you want to make sure you have good policies. Do you have a vacation policy? Heck, do you have a, a, a sabbatical policy? Do you have a leave of absence policy? Do you have a pregnancy leave policy? All of these policies are what other employers have and what employees expect when they come to a church. Have you reviewed those? Are they, uh, do they conform with the law? You want to make sure that all those things and all your ducks are in a row. The last thing, certainly not the last, it's just the last on my list of things that pastors should need to know is insurance, insurance, insurance. You need to make sure as a manager that you're protecting this business organization that you have. You need to protect it from people, outsiders who come on to your property and may slip and fall at some, place, at some point, and then they want to sue your organization. Do you have insurance for that? Do you have insurance for all the other types of mishaps or potential lawsuits? Do you have insurance for employment lawsuits? Do you have insurance for other types of things to protect your organization so that you don't find yourself one day um, with, with, uh, with nothing? Do you have insurance that in case somebody embezzles from your church, that, that an insurance will cover that embezzlement? So you need to make sure all those things are being covered. Do you have the insurance? Are you paying for the insurance? Make sure your premiums are up to, up to speed. And if and when you get sued, make sure that you tender that lawsuit to your insurance company. I represented a church a few years ago, and that church had an insurance policy to protect it in that particular lawsuit. They never submitted it to the insurance company. We were sitting at a mediation trying to resolve that lawsuit, and it suddenly occurred to them, oh, we actually have insurance, even after they looked and, and believed they didn't. It was too late. It was six months down the road, and uh, that particular church ended up paying everything out of its own pocket to settle that particular lawsuit. So insurance is a huge thing for you.